Hi and welcome back to a new video. I want to wish you a very happy new year. I hope you had a great start into 2022. Unlike me, when I just came back from vacation and wanted to just go to my PC and do the, the things you do when you come back to va uh, from vacation, started up Steam, checked for updates, and then it started to get weird. Things were very slow. And then I realized on the Dominus Extreme display that I had a CPU core temperature of 110 degrees Celsius, which is not normal. And then I thought or figured out that my pump is not working for whatever reason, which is very annoying. And also, I'm not sure, it just had to happen. This PC is usually 24 seven running. It's my personal rig I'm using for like the video rendering and also for gaming. And it has served me very well so far. I'm very happy with the choice of the 3175X. We featured a huge build process of this PC, I think one and a half years ago or almost two years. And so far, it has been a great PC to me and it's usually running 24 seven. I maybe restarted once every one or two months, once uh, Windows requires a kick in the ass, but so far has been running great. And now it was the first time that it wasn't running for like two weeks, came back, pump not working, great. All right, let's figure out if the pump is really broken and yeah, if we can get it back to life. Before we start with the disassembling process, I just want to be sure that it really does not work anymore. So we will fire it up again. But since I already checked this for the German part of our video, yeah, you can see nothing is happening inside the pump. I can only hear a short clicking noise, which is something I had before in the previous PC, which we built. And it also only lasted like one or one and a half years. And then the pump was broken with exactly the same behavior. Like you have this initial click once and then nothing is happening anymore. Apart from that, you can see some things also never changed. Like IQ is still not supporting this huge amount of memory sticks. It's sad, but whenever the system was powered off like this, I have to manually reseed those memory sticks to make sure that I can get all of them lighted up. That's something I'm not going to care about now. One thing I was wondering about is, it looks like it's an air bubble in here, but like a solid one. I'm not sure if this, there's some solid, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It just looks weird. What also looks weird and sad is the OLED on the Dominus Extreme. You can see because I always just displayed the CPU temperature. Sad, sad. It's a great board. It's a great system. It has served me so well. But these tiny details, considering that it was such an expensive motherboard, yeah, not great. I first have to figure out how I assembled or how I put the pump in there. I cannot really remember anymore, to be fully honest. But luckily, I have the videos to check because um, I know that I screwed it to this like uh, plastic acrylic sheet, which we made specially for this PC. But then I also have to get this back out so I can access the pump fully. And for that, I think I have to, I mean, I'm sure I have to remove this one and this one and also the tubing down there. For these that never saw the system before, it's a Dominus Extreme featuring the 3175X Xeon CPU, 28 cores, and it's fully done with glass tubing, which always makes it quite difficult to disassemble. Hmm. Quite strange that in the upper part, where this fitting won't even have like direct contact to the fluid, there's already still corrosion. Mm. In situations like these, I'm just very happy that I back then decided to add a drain port. That is always something I can absolutely recommend. Well, at least that is working well. One thing I love about glass tubing is you just have no residues inside. That is great. Like nothing left. If you compare this to PETG or something like acrylic tubing, you will always have some stuff stick to the tube, which is not the case here. But what I hate about this glass tubing is it's so difficult to get out and I'm always afraid to break these. <sighs> yeah, that's not great. Whew. Bonk. 
My current plan is to simply remove the screws from the pump from the bottom because otherwise if I cannot access these, especially the back ones will be di more difficult, I will have to disassemble the entire thing. Right now I just pushed up the pump and the rest of our combination as far as I can to the top to access the screws from underneath, but otherwise I will have to remove the entire distro plate like every single tube to be able to remove the acrylic plate from the back. And here we have the pump. Just mechanically speaking, I don't see why the pump failed, at least just judging from the ceramic bearing. It all looks totally okay to me. There are some residues inside from the white fluid, but nothing that I would consider unusual after that time of usage. So just mechanically, I'm not sure if there was an issue. I don't think so. Hmm. Maybe we just assemble this one, plug it in and see if it's running or not. I mean, if it's broken, it won't matter anyway. No, let's see. I kind of have to revert what I just said. That is our replacement pump. It's a D5 which was meant for a completely different project with an external Mora. That's also why this is not PWM controlled and doesn't have the nice leaving and stuff. But I mean it's a replacement pump and as long as my PC will work again I'm totally fine with that. can always replace it later and also sleeve the cables if required. If I gently touch this it is so easy to rotate. Yeah, it is much harder to rotate this pump and I'm not sure why. If I compare the internals of these two, of course this is clean because it's a fresh pump. Hmm. Internally you can see some residues, I don't think it's unusual though, like nothing damaged on the plastic. But it absolutely has to be this part because if I put this on the new pump, it also almost does not rotate. Yeah, seems like bearing damage. Damn. It worked out much better than I thought initially because we were able to push up the pump. I already, as you can see, mounted the new pump back in there. It also doesn't look that bad considering the like cables are not sleeved. I still have to organize the blue one a bit more. But already put in the like first glass tube and now only the top glass tube is missing. Talking about the loop itself, if you just look at a GPU block, I mean it doesn't look nice, but I think it still works fine. This looks a bit corroded, but it's not that bad to be honest. And it's only because it's a small gap between the glass and like the nickel plated copper underneath. And that's why it's always looking a bit like not that nice. But if you look at the structure internally, nothing is blocked. And that's the thing that matters the most for me as long as the cooling is fine. I won't be able to change this, even if I open up everything and clean it. After a few weeks it will look exactly the same again. Because we already did that once and I know that it's not going to help. So I will just leave it like this, assemble everything and then I hope the machine will work again. Luckily this went much quicker than I initially expected because we were able to access the pump without disassembling the whole thing. I also inspected the rotor once more and I'm 100% sure that it's a bearing damage. I'm not sure if there was some weird particle maybe inside somewhere, it could be apart from the nickel plating somewhere, something from the radiator, something considered, something caused by the fluid. Not sure why this happened, I can just tell that it happened. And I think one of the reasons why I noticed this so late was because the system is constantly running. And only if you power it off, which is not even happening, if I'm restarting this once every two months, then I'm not even even powering off. And that's maybe the reason why this lasted so long, because when it's powered off and I guess the initial momentum to rotate the pump will be so much higher with the bearing damage, that's why I only, only noticed this now. But I thought about it and I think this system has been running constantly for over a year probably, because as I said before, I'm restarting this maybe once a month or every two months, but I'm only restarting and not powering off. So this could have happened a long time ago, lasted a long time and I hope with the new pump it will also last again maybe a year once we might build a new system, we will find out. I hooked up a different PSU to the back so we can easily just fill the entire loop, check for leaks and then I hope I can continue the last two days of my vacation.
Meanwhile, one day later, now check this out. Just going to do it for like a second because I don't want the pump to run dry. I also make it sure that the bearing is a little bit wet, otherwise you would have heard a loud like squeaking noise. But you can see that D5 is working. And that is because yesterday, after I shot main part of the video, I used my macro lens for the camera to get some like detailed shots of the bearing, of the inside part of the bearing. And when I then inspected these shots just on my PC, I noticed that it looked like there is some kind of a layer inside the bearing. It's, it didn't look like it's damaged, but there was some kind of residue left inside. And then I just decided to simply take a screwdriver and try to scratch off this layer, like gently. And this worked. There were some things inside, I'm not sure what it is. It was very hard, but I was able to scratch it off. And then when most of the part was gone, I simply used a cotton swab and some cleaning alcohol and then was able to fix the pump. I only have to be careful because Sheik loves these, but so far it seems like she didn't spot it. So it turns out the pump was not like permanently damaged, at least until I started scratching off whatever was left in the bearing. However, now that I learned from it, I would probably be a lot more careful and maybe not straight take the sharpest screwdriver to clean it. But the good thing is that I can still use this pump for my Mora project because this is just going to be an external like water cooling setup for my testing right here. And that should be totally fine, especially considering I will only use this when I'm in the room, like right at the setup testing, while my 24-7 rig is running 24-7. And I want to be sure that the pump will be fine and I don't want to leave this room and then, I don't know, like at 2 a.m. in the morning, my system is going to blow up. That's not going to be nice, but I'm quite happy that I learned that you can, at least to a certain degree, clean these bearings and get it back to life. I hope you also learned something from this. Thanks for tuning in. I wish you a very nice Sunday. See you next time. Bye bye.